Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And this one, this is gonna be a good one because if you've been following this at all, you know I've been waiting on a clutch for this thing for about six months. Been ghosted by a bunch of clutch companies that said, yeah, we'll build you one, and then just never came through. Um, we're not gonna talk about that because you guys came through. I posted asking if anybody knew a company that could do it. Bunch of you guys said Ace Racing Clutches. Got a hold of them, they said, sorry, we don't make it. But they can point they pointed me to Kentucky Clutch. And Kentucky Clutch, they built me a clutch. From the time I called them, three days later, I had a clutch and pressure plate sitting on my doorstep. So huge shout out to Kentucky Clutch. They actually know what customer service is, so that is awesome. No run around, no nothing. They knew what they were talking about. They got me a clutch in three freaking days. So that is amazing. But this video, we're gonna put that clutch in and we're gonna go drive it. But there's some other upgrades that go with that clutch because this thing's got an NV4500 and it's just not up to the task of what I'm doing with this truck. And we'll talk about that real quick before we get into it. So why is it so hard to get a clutch for an old farm truck? Well, I'll give you a quick rundown on this truck in case you don't know. It's a 51 Dodge Dually, you can see the tires back there. Swapped a four-wheel drive. It's got a small block Chrysler with an NV4500 that came behind a small block Chrysler. And it's making a lot of power. And this is where things get out of hand is, you know, it's, it's a stock 5.9 Magnum. It's got all the ARP hardware through it. It's got a cam and valve springs, everything else. Stock rod, stock piston, stock heads. It's still got that big old kegger intake, but it's making 20 pounds of boost and it's doing it on E85. And I'm spinning this thing to 6,000 RPM. It's got enough fuel system for about 650 horsepower and I have totally maxed that out. This thing's been running 107% duty cycle on the injectors. So it's making probably about 600-ish horse, probably about 800 foot-pounds based on some previous dynos. That's way more power than most people make with a 5.9 and then try to shove through, you know, a stock Dodge NV4500. So there is no off-the-shelf clutch that'll do what I need. And my plan for this thing, you know, it's, it's kind of just a beater. I just go rip it. You see it's got the flag on it because we're planning on going to the dunes. It's got big suspension, but I need to be able to four-wheel drive launch this thing. And last time I tried it, it just totally blew through the clutch that's in it and yeah you can see that video here so if i remember correctly that video was like 4,000 rpm and six pounds of boost and you can see it didn't go anywhere because the clutch gave up and to do that with this clutch i'm going to break the trans so we've got some upgrades for the trans coming and it's kind of stock. There's really no fancy aftermarket parts that are going into it, but it's gonna be a hell of a lot stronger than a stock Dodge NV4500 that came behind a 5.9 Magnum by the time we're done. And, you know, I'll walk you through it, but this thing, man, I just need to launch this thing. It sounds so good on the two-step and with the four-wheel drive, it's gonna hurt some feelings in the dirt drags once we're done. But first thing we gotta do, we gotta yank that trans out and then we'll go through all the upgrades that I've done previously and the upgrades we're gonna do now. And I can't wait. Finally, this thing is gonna be what I want. All right, guys, let's talk about the clutch that was in this truck. And if you go way back, I had a center force in it. That that really didn't hold at all. Didn't have any good luck with it. So then I, I ordered a spec clutch. It was a spec stage three plus, rated for I think 800 foot pounds. And that was great for a long time. And then as the thing started making more power and as I started to push it harder and harder, it started to slip. So 
after Cletus and Cars, I had talked to Spec and I and they were gonna build me a clutch, so I sent them my pressure plate. So what I have here is not the Spec pressure plate. And I've been running the stock pressure plate with the Spec Stage 3 Plus disc just for the last event, really. Other than that, it's been a full Spec Stage 3. But it was the same style of pressure plate. You know, it was a diaphragm style pressure plate. And then this is the clutch disc. And as you can see, you can probably catch it in the light. This thing's seen a ton of heat. Like I said, it really didn't hold up. Um, it's a stock flywheel. Unfortunately, I'd rather have a billet. Um, I can't find one for it. But yeah, so this is a pretty aggressive disc, but if you look at it, it's, I mean, it's gone. This is way too much power for what this thing's been holding. So the input on this is an inch and an eighth, 10 spline. And that's what came. There's two Dodge NV4500s. There's a light duty and a heavy duty. Light duty is V8, heavy duty is V10 and Cummins. They're the same trans for the V10 and Cummins. And what this comes with is this little inch and an eighth 10 spline input. It's kind of a tiny little input. And if you go back, I already broke the output on this trans. I'll go over that later. So I'm, I'm worried about this little input because the diesels come with an inch and a quarter 10 spline. So it's quite a bit bigger and those guys break them. And this thing's making diesel torque, diesel power. I want to do four wheel drive launches. I'm really concerned about this little dinky input, which is why when this clutch stopped holding, I needed a, a very specific custom, you could say, clutch. And that's because the diesel guys, like I said, break the inch and a quarter. That's inch and an eighth. What the diesel guys go to is inch and three eighths by 10 spline. And if you just look at that, there's, I mean, no comparison there. It is absolutely huge. And the nice thing is the pilot bearing diameter is exactly the same. So that works out. The length is the same. There's a few other things you have to change on the trans and I'll show you that. So with this, I wanted an inch and three eighths, but I needed a 12 inch clutch disc because the Cummins runs, they don't make Cummins clutches that I could find for an inch and an eighth with a 12 inch clutch. They all go to a 13, so that doesn't fit my flywheel. So when I called up Kentucky Clutch and I told him what I needed, he said, no problem, I got you. So what he said, and I haven't looked this up, I'm just going off memory. He said, this is a Chevy pressure plate, which it's the same bolt pattern, I already matched it up, it fits perfectly. Now, another difference here is you can see, this is a diaphragm clutch. Those are the springs, is basically these little fingers. This is what they call a finger clutch. And instead of having a diaphragm, if you can see in there, it actually has coil springs. So this has a much higher clamping load than this pressure plate does, or even the spec pressure plate does. Now these are known for being a little bit, I'd say more touchy. I talked to, to Kentucky Clutch, they said, yeah, drivability is gonna be pretty nice. Like it's Like it's not stock, but it's not gonna be a problem. So this pressure plate has a lot more clamping force than what I had. And now on to the best part is this is my clutch disc. And I mean, it's huge. If we take the old little input, I mean, it wobbles around in there. So this is a centered iron disc. This is a competition style clutch. And this thing should take all the abuse I throw at it. It doesn't have organic material like the clutch I was running. And as you can see, there's no damping springs in the middle, which makes it stronger. And I asked Kentucky Clutch, I said, how, I said, how strong is this? What, you know, is this gonna hold up to what I want? And he said, well, it's strong enough to break your transmission. That was good enough for me. I gave him a credit card immediately. But with a centered iron clutch, these are meant for heat. They're meant to slip. So when I launch this thing, because if I just sidestep the clutch, I'm probably still gonna break something. Probably not in the trans, maybe transfer case, maybe axles. So I'm gonna need to slip it off the line a little bit. And these clutches are designed to take that. And when they get that heat in them, they hook up. So this thing should take all the abuse I'm gonna throw at it. Because this clutch disc is way gnarlier than this one. And as you can, the other side of it too, as you can see, if you look at this pressure plate, that's about an inch and a half of contact area. 
Look at this one. This one's huge. This thing's going to contact this whole clutch disc. This thing is going to do what I need it to. And, you know, I may give up some drivability. I may give up some maintenance. These are known to be a little more maintenance intensive, which you got to pay to play at some point, right? I want to go do four wheel drive launches at 4,000 RPM and six pounds of boost and then smack it with 20 down, down track. It, it, you know, it's going to come to this. So we'll see how the drivability is. But with all of this, because of the bigger input, it takes a bigger bearing retainer, and I'll show you that on the trans, but it takes a different throw out bearing. So you have to swap to the bigger throw out bearing. And what I need to do now, because this, nobody makes this. As far as I know, nobody's put this in an NV4500. So I need to make sure that the stack up is the same. And by that, what I mean is when this whole thing is on here and torqued down, the distance from the flywheel to basically the back of this little step, because that's where it hits the clutch fork. That's where it's pushing from. I need to make sure that's roughly the same distance on both these clutches. If it's taller, the, it may never fully engage the clutch. If it's shorter, I may not be able to fully release the clutch. So what I did notice is if you first look at, you know, that's a much thicker bearing, but if you line them up perch to perch, it's actually shorter. So there's a few things we got to check to make sure this is all going to work. And there's nothing special about this flywheel. I just didn't want to have the downtime of needing to get this one machined because I was trying to do this all, you know, in one weekend, you know, get it out and back in. And the nice thing is this will actually give me a spare flywheel on the shelf if I do need to service this one. So what I'm going to need to do is measure these up basically from the flywheel surface to like I said, the back of those pads. And if it's close to the same, then I know I am, uh, I should be in good shape. Okay. After a lot of measuring, you have to measure from the back of the flywheel face where it bolts to the crank. Cause that's kind of your, your centering point out. And to those pads, it's five inches. To these pads, it's five inches. So that tells me that this one should bolt right in. And my clearance from my throw out bearing to my pressure plate in the fully released state should be the same. So this thing should behave the same. I shouldn't have any clutch issues. Yeah, sometimes you miss things. So who knows? It might happen anyway. But I need to get this thing bolted up with that clutch disc in it and the big old input shaft. This thing's going to be gnarly. And then we can go to the trans. We got to swap the input shaft on the trans. Remember that comment about I'm worried I'm going to break the input shaft if I don't upgrade it? Funny, funny story. All right, so I got the bell housing off. So I get this bearing retainer off and I'm getting ready and I'm looking at it and I'm looking, I'm going, man, I really twisted those splines. Like you can see they, they move over. So I was like, okay, well, this thing is probably, you know, pretty close to breaking. And let me pull it out. And if you look, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it. Oh, yeah, see that? That's a crack. That's a crack. That's another. These are all little cracks right there. This thing was basically every single spline is cracked all the way around. I mean, you can see that one really goes up. Yeah, they're all, that one goes all the way across right there. I mean, look at that. Yeah, so um, I was basically one clutch dump away from not having an input shaft left. left. So this damn thing, that little Turbo 5.9 Magnum, and I was worried about this, even with a clutch that doesn't hold and slips, it could break an inch and an eighth input. So yeah, that's why you need to upgrade this. It's too small to make a big power on. So I got the bearing retainer off and then the input shaft just slides out. So this is the old, this is the gas input. And then this is the diesel. You can see that is significantly bigger. So if you buy this, all you want is the inch and three eighths, 10 spline diesel input shaft upgrade. 
And you get the input shaft, you get the bearing, you get this bearing retainer, which is what the, you know, this slides inside of. And it holds that bearing. It all comes together, I think it was like 150 bucks or something for everything. Because it's, you're doing the same thing as the diesel guy. You're just not going from inch and a quarter to inch and three-eighths. You're going from inch and an eighth to inch and three-eighths. So it's the exact same thing, and it should just bolt right in here. You just got to put a little RTV on the back of the bearing retainer, and it bolts right in. And then, because if you look here, you can see the two bearing retainers. This one's a lot smaller, and that's why we needed to change to the bigger the bigger throw out bearing. So you just need a throw out bearing for one of these, which actually I think, I'm trying to remember, I think I just bought it for a uh, diesel trans. I think it's actually the same whether or not you have the that input. That one I don't remember. I, I'd have to go look at what I bought. But yeah, so this is really straightforward to put this input shaft in here. And it's the same length. Everything is exactly the same. Pilot bearing's the same. It's just, that's way bigger, way beefier. It doesn't neck down. So that allows me to run the bigger clutch and keeps me from hopefully breaking that. So let's get that all bolted up in there. And then we'll talk about the output, which is another thing you need, 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 need to upgrade. So on the output, this is the back of the main shaft. So this runs all the way to the front of the trans and on a gas and V4500. And actually all gas transmissions behind small block Chryslers, all automatics behind Cummins trucks were a little 23 spline output. The diesel and V10 and V4500s were 29 spline. And the difference is the splines are the same size. So when you add six more splines, this diameter grows and if you look back, oh, I don't know, say two years ago, I did a four wheel drive launch with this thing and I just snapped it right off. I just took this off, it necks down right back here. So I put the diesel 29 spline main shaft in and you can go watch that video. You got to tear the whole trans down. It's, it's honestly, it's not bad. I had never done a manual trans before and I did it. It was, it's pretty straightforward. These transmissions are pretty simple. The only thing I didn't know when I bought it, because the Cummins strands, they have an issue with fifth gear nut backing off from the kind of the harmonics of the Cummins. So you can buy a main shaft kit for a Cummins and it just goes right in, it works great. The one caveat is you also have to buy a new fifth gear because fifth gear rides on the, the back here where it's smaller. And then if you make that bigger, you also need to change the input on your transfer case. Or you could go find a 29 spline transfer case out of a Cummins truck. But what I did was I called up Torque King 4x4, gave them the number off my trans. They gave me a new input. This is the old one. They gave me a new input and a new bearing. Tore the transfer case down and put it in. And you can see, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, but this is the old 23 spline. It is much, much smaller than this thing. This thing is way bigger. So now, what you're looking at here is an NV4500 that is stronger than any factory NV4500 they ever made. It's got the diesel output in it. It has an upgraded diesel input. This input shaft is bigger than a factory diesel would have gotten. So yeah, it's a gas trans. But it's stronger than an NV4500 HD because it's got the stronger input in it. And you can see here, this is the gas fork, so you don't have to change that. Just the bigger throw bearing, input shaft bearing retainer. And to go any stronger than this, you're going to have to have somebody build one with aftermarket gears. So this thing, I mean, truck pulling guys use this setup. That's kind of where that input shaft came from, is the truck pulling guys were breaking that inch and a quarter. So this thing should live behind this. Even with this damn turbo shoving 20 pounds of boost down it with the E85. So I'm going to put that thing back in and then I actually pull the transfer case off. We're going to put a clock ring on the transfer case because I've got a bind issue. This thing has so much travel in the front. It's got 14 inches of travel, 
but it has so much down travel it actually binds the front drive shaft. So I bought a clocking ring and I'm hoping that I can clock the, the transfer case down a little and gain a little bit more down travel because right now I've got a limit strap on that side. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But that is one beefy NV4500, and this thing is going to be insane on four-wheel drive launches. I cannot wait. Got the trans back in, and my clocking ring showed up, which is this steel piece here. So this is where it would normally would bolt. The studs would come through here. So it has three different places I can put it. I set it in the middle just to kind of test fit it. And see if I want to go less, which would move it back here, which would bring this side up. Or if I go to this hole, that would rotate it more clockwise, which would push this down. So I want to get this down lower in truck, so I have less of a drive shaft angle. My only issue is that I also have an angle kind of coming towards the center of the truck. So as this rotates down, it's also going to pull it towards the center line of the truck. So if I go too far, I might bind up a different way. So I'm going to try this out and we'll see how it fits in there. Transfer case is in. I ended up only clocking it down one bolt hole because as you can see, that kind of put it right in line with the trans cross member. But I think that's gonna give me an extra probably inch or two of down travel. So I also clearance the drive shaft a little bit. But that thing's in, I adjusted the linkage up because I had to change it a little bit because it's rotated. But to get this trans out of this thing, I have to pull the oil filter. So I figured, you know what? While the oil filter's out, let me uh, let me cut it apart and let me grab a flashlight. Uh, that's not so great. You can see that's definitely some bearing material. Yeah, there's some big chunks over there. The filter though, the filter doesn't really look bad. Like. Yeah, I mean, most of these, you can't really even see anything. You know, there might be a, a piece or two of bearing material in there. So, I mean, it got a little hot and it did, I mean, this thing did totally shut itself down in that burnout down at the ruckus. I mean, it just kind of lost power and shut down. Maybe it got hot. I don't know, but we're going to find out because I'm not changing the motor. I'm just gonna do an oil, do a filter and oil change on it. Top it back off. It's got great oil pressure, but if it does spin a bearing or something, well, I'm not too surprised, but who knows? That may just go away. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, this thing is, like I said, just a beater. Well, I slept on that oil filter and uh, you know i got some really big plans for this thing and we want to go do some really cool stuff with it and i just can't do it if i know the motors hurt so i gotta fix the motor i was really hoping this video was gonna end with this thing just doing crazy stupid stuff with a new clutch in it and unfortunately it's not going to because I, I gotta fix that motor i gotta pull this thing out i gotta see what's wrong so we're gonna do that in the next video and then we'll actually go get to test that clutch, which kind of sucks. I really wanted to do it now, but I just can't. I can't go shove 20 pounds of boost into a motor that I know is slowly eating itself alive. So we gotta do something about that, but we'll fix that next time and then we'll go beat on that new clutch.